willing to do it if I if I will myself to do it. If God shows me something's wrong, I got I just got to put it away from me, Brother Don. Thank God I want. Thank God to to draw now. The Bible said in the Book of James. The first chapter, he said, let us earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. How many believe tonight that the church is not where it was when it first started off? Amen. How many see your fault? Thank God in your failures tonight is when Peter went up to the gates of beautiful and he said, gold and silver have I none such as I have given by thee in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, that was the key. When he spoke his name, he said it's not by any power or anything they've done, but it was by this name, faith in this name, they was able to, that this man make him whole, that he could get up and go running through the temple, thank God. And I'll tell you what, he went worshiping and praising God. And I think about little John Scott every time that we preach about that or we talk about it, or me and Sherry was talking about it this week, I, I think about John Scott when the kids used to have that play, and he'd be the one that would go dancing and praising God. He liked to do that part. I'll tell you what, God wants us to dance and praise His name tonight. Not be ashamed of Him. I, I don't want to be ashamed of Him. If the Lord said, get up and run, I want to run. Thank God. That's what He told David. Thank he said, encourage yourself in the Lord and go. Thank God. But you, you've got to start out to say, I want to go all the way. And you can't find it to try to find a way to find the easiest way because it's not an easy way. Thank God. Your, your old flesh has got to lay down itself. It's got to be crucified. You ever read the scripture that says to take up the cross and, and follow after the Lord? Thank God. Well, that old cross, it's right here. Amen. We got we got to bear it. We got to we got to overcome it. Thank God. But when we crucify the flesh and the lust of the flesh, that's when God's going to give us power. But tonight, with the help of the Lord, I've got a few scriptures I want to read, and I want to start out tonight in the thirteenth chapter of the book of First Kings. With the help of the Lord, you want to go with me? Amen. A little teaching tonight, maybe. This I've been thinking about this all day today. Yeah, I'll tell you what, children, the answer's in the Bible. God's word, his its answer is in there. Whatever you need, it's a, you might find it in the Old Testament, you find it in the New Testament, but there's an answer for you, but you have to see it. And God, He gives us all these allegories in the Old Testament to show us the things that's going on in the New Testament. Thank God. Back there, under the, under the law, they had what they called a carrying away. In other words, they, they was disobedient to the Lord, and the Lord let their enemies come in and carry away their children. They carried away the temple. They carried away everything they had. But it talks about in the New Testament about there's going to be a falling away. Thank God. Even, you know, you have to have something to fall away from it. And I'll tell you what, in the world as a whole, they're falling away from God. They're falling away from the church. Thank God. The world has come in and introduced itself to the world, and the church has got the things that's going on. They got things going on in the church, thank God, that shouldn't be there, thank God. The, the devil brought them in and nobody took them out, thank God. I'll tell you what, my mom used to tell us, it's time to clean out, thank God. It was time to take our stuff outside, amen, and I'll tell you what, I, I want to take all my stuff outside. If it's not in there, you know the Bible said, come out from amongst her, my separate, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. We want anything that's wrong, anything that's evil, we want to get it out of our lives, thank God, because it's going to come back and destroy us. I don't want to be destroyed tonight. And I'll tell you what, the wrath of God abideth upon the children of disobedient. If we're disobedient, we're promised the wrath of God to be up on our house. Thank God. Oh, we might be doing all right right now, but thank God we're going to have to answer before the time comes. Thank God. And I'll tell you what, what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of people that's not made it to get ready because it takes time to get ready. Thank God to meet the Lord. There's a plan, children. I know a lot of times we, we can go on our feelings and we can watch movies on television and we can see how angels come back and they get a second chance and all that stuff but all that stuff story bit religion it don't come out of the Bible thank God there's only one thing you're going to either make it or you're not thank God and I'll tell you what it takes time to get ready thank God and we got to be baptized for the remission of our sins we need to repent of our sins thank God and I'll tell you what I, I remember one time when I had an old habit brother Don I'd come to the Lord the first week I'd come to the Lord thank God and, and I, got, I, I, was, I don't know never got baptized or was getting ready to get baptized, but I had this old habit, thank God, and, and I was wrestling with it whether I was going to do it or not. And I, you know, the old flesh said, well, I'll take my time giving it up. I'll just, you know, just wait a little bit here. God will help me. And then, thank God, but you know what? I had a dream, thank God, I laying in my bed. I don't know if it was in the morning or at night. Thank God, I know it was way up in the morning. I don't know if it was a 
and vision. I don't know if it was a dream, but I remember I came to myself and I was in a place where it was all gray. Thank God. There wasn't no life. There wasn't no death there. There wasn't anything. I thought, this is the most loneliest place that I've ever been. The place that I thought, I thought I didn't have no children. I didn't have no family. And I thought, my, this is a, where am I at? And all of a sudden, it just, no voice spoke to me, but it came to my mind and said, you're standing before God. Not a fear come over me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. There wasn't no word spoken, but in this dream, I had this feeling that just come over me. And I thought within myself, I thought, oh, I'm so glad that I went to the altar. I'm so glad that I repented. Hey, God, but you know what? I was saying that, and I was justifying myself. An old habit came up before me, and I thought that no words were spoken, but it was in my mind. You know, the Bible said, you know, I said, you know, we know if we're doing wrong. We know if things is wrong. Sometimes God will show us things, and we try to push them away from us, put them in the back of our mind, but we know, thank God, that they're wrong. But I'll tell you what, this old habit, thank God, that I had when I was the same, when it went about, thank God, I just remember I stood there, and I thought, I'm not going to make it. I thought, Lord, surely, for this one thing, this one thing, I'm, going, I'm not going to make it. And I thought in the dream, I thought, I'm not going to make it. This one thing, this condemnation of this one thing, it's going to hold me back. And you know what? I woke up that morning, Brother Don, I, I looked at God, and I was so thankful. I got up, and I thank God for showing me that dream. I thanked Him that it was a dream. How many of ever had a dream? And you woke up, and you said, I thank you, Jesus. And it was just a dream. Thank God, but I'll tell you what, that dream, I don't know how many went that day. That day, I got rid of it because I wanted to go with the Lord. How many want to go with the Lord tonight? How many you say, well, I've been to the altar. That's good, but there's still things that's undone. There's a life that we live. we got to live a holy life, children. we got to go on and sanctify ourselves. The Bible said cleansing ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. You know, you can have no filthy spirit. And you know what? I've had an old filthy spirit before. Brother Don, I've had an old f unforgiven spirit at times, thank God, and it would try to overtake me. Maybe somebody knew something to me and my old flesh would try to hold a grudge against them. But I'll tell you what, I found that God, He said, we got to love everybody. No matter, thank God, what they do or what they say, there's got to be forgiveness in our heart. If we don't forgive our brother, thank God, but God's not going to forgive us. God's going, God requires out of us. Thank God. He requires out of us no what we do. He's going to do it back to us. If I can't forgive you, Brother Don, how can I ask Him to forgive me? Thank God. You know what? God is not a respected person. He loves everybody the same. Amen. Whether you're old, whether you're young. Amen. But there's a plan. And if we get a dismayed on our own, if we get a just not ready to meet the Lord on our own, then Jesus wouldn't have had to come and die. There wouldn't have been no ju justification. There wouldn't even been no need for reason for it. We could have just went like Moses did and went up to talk to the Lord. We could have been like Abraham and offer a sacrifice and, and God would have forgiven. Thank God, but that ain't the way Jesus was just showing us uh, that that was a pattern back there. All those things was just a pattern. Thank God to show us how to get to the Lord. They showed us all the way from the garden and it took the blood, thank God, to save you from your sins. It takes the blood to save you now. Let me say amen. When they found themselves naked, God had to kill the animals to give them the clothing to cover their flesh up, to cover up their nakedness. Amen. Even the Garden of Eden, I'll tell you what, you go out here and, and you rake off the ground. Thank God you rake off a bare spot in the ground and God will clothe it back. He'll put the grass or the weeds, He'll put something on it. Amen. Because God wants it clothed. He covered everything. He even takes the trees. He covers them with leaves. He covers the stem with bark. That's the only way they, make it, they can live because of that life is in that bark. Thank God. There's life and our holiness tonight and the way we live before God. Thank God. And I'll tell you what, we're walking epistles tonight. Everything we do and everywhere we go, we're telling people how to live for God. But in the day we're living, people's let up and let up and let up till nobody knows how to live. The Bible said that a beast that would ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, he said, men of the earth would wonder whose name were written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation world. I don't know if, it, uh, if I quoted it this right, but I'm going to tell you what, people don't know the way today. Everybody says, I know Jesus, but they really don't know the way. Amen. But here in the 13th chapter of the book of the first, uh, first Kings, and I'm at the wrong one. 
I'm at the wrong Kings here. Amen. Amen. First Kings 13. I'm going to tell you something. God wants his people together. How many say amen? He wants us to be in unity. He wants us to walk together. He wants us all to look alike. He wants us all to dress alike. In other words, it ain't just everybody do what you want to do. Thank God it never has been like that. Amen. Not now, not ever. Thank God. If it was unholy 20 years ago, it's unholy now. Thank God. When people look at you and they say, well, if it's all right for them to do it. And I'll tell you what, I don't know about you, but even myself. Thank God I, I've been on the job and I've seen people that do stuff, Brother Don, and no devil would say, well, look at there. They're Christian. And they, they do that. If it's, it's, if it's all right for them, well, it's all right for you too. You ever had that happen? And you have to go say, oh, devil, you're a liar. Yeah. Amen. Because I know God showed me that's wrong. And I've even tried to talk to some of them people about some of those things. And they wouldn't they wouldn't talk to me about it. They'd say, well, you know, God has to show me. I'll tell you what, if it's in his word, God's already showed us. But if you know, how many believe Solomon was a man of God? But what happened to him in the end? God gave him more wisdom than any ever man. He was rich beyond compare. I mean, I mean, he had everything that you could imagine. But his heart, in his latter times, he got turned away from the Lord. He turned and he followed after strange women. The Bible said in the 11th chapter of 1 Kings, he said he, said he loved many strange women. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh, I believe there were seven nations of them, all of them. And the, all of the ones that God had sent for him not to marry among them, not to go and be a part of them, thank God. Because if you go out and be a part of them, you're going to be, they're going to be thorns in your sides. They're going to, they're going to, your, your children are going to be lost because of it. Thank God. But old Solomon, thank God he got in trouble with God. And, and in the end, it, it cost the nation to be split up. Thank God. I, I don't want to do anything, thank God, to cause anybody to fall. And, I, and I'll tell you what. I've been I've been judged many of the times in my lives and even in my ministry. Thank God where after I hadn't thought about it, Brother Don, I had to go back and ask the Lord to forgive me. Amen. I'd say, God have mercy upon me. Lord, if you give me judgment, give it to me, Lord, in a way, God, where I can get across to people that I don't hurt people. I don't want to discourage nobody, but I want people to, to realize, thank God, that this is a serious thing with God. Amen. But you know, Solomon, thank God, he loved these strange women, and, and God wouldn't take destroy the kingdom in his day, but he said it with in your son, he said, I'm going to cause ten tribes of the twelve. I'm going to cause them to depart from you. Thank God they're going to be given to somebody else. Thank God. And you know what? Solomon had a son. His name was Rehoboam. And this son, thank God, well, after Solomon died, he took he anointed him as king over Judah. Thank God. But then along came Jeroboam, and Jeroboam came in on the scene, and, and they went before Rehoboam. And I thought about this attitude a lot. How that old, how that Rehoboam, thank God, the people come, and they said, you know, your dad was hard on us, thank God. In other words, he taxed us hard. He had all these projects going and, and said he really made it hard on us. But if you'll go easier on us and you'll lighten our load, thank God, we'll, he said, we'll follow you. We'll go, you know, we'll we'll, we'll serve you, thank God. And then and, and old Rehoboam, he went to the old men that had been with his dad and he asked a question, thank God. He said, what advice do you give me? And they said, well, he said, more or less, he said, no, not this way. But he said, you're a servant. If you be a servant to the people, thank God, and you show them you love and you care about them, said that they're not going to go with you, thank God. They're going to be they're going to uh, you accept you as being the king. But thank God, the young men, their advice was and said, No, you, you, I'm gonna make it harder on you. My father, he is whips, I'm gonna chastise you with scorpion. I'm gonna make it hard on you, thank God. Sometimes once we get started for the Lord, we use our our our, uh, our thoughts and our judgment. We hurt people and drive people away. But you can really help people, thank God, if you just stop and wait for a minute. Thank God, but I thought this was a bad decision upon this king, thank God, that it was of the Lord, thank God. So when the men of Israel came back, thank God, to him, thank God, when they give, he give, they give them the answer, they all left him, thank God. And they went to anoint Jeroboam as king. Hallelujah to God. And the kingdom began to be divided. And God saw this division coming. He foretold it, thank God, and, and it was going to happen. But you know what? Thank God, as they went on, amen, thank God, to old Jeroboam, God would bless him too. He, he became over the ten tribes. But what he done is he, he went against he went against God. And you know, I've thought about this so many times. Amen. If I 
separation, division, because thank God, in this in this time, thank God, it came time, Jeroboam, he took 10 of the 10, 12 tribes. He took all the land, he took all the men and the women and the children, and he was their king. But when he came around at the time when people were supposed to come together and go to Jerusalem, thank God, to worship and go down there, thank God, when they were ready to go to during the Passover or whatever their, whatever their day, holy days was, when it was time for them to go down there, Brother Don, thank God, that he started Thing. He said, now you know what? He said, if the people start going back down to Jerusalem, they got the worship the way God told them to do it, then they're going to be reconciled back to their king. Amen. They're going to go back with Rehoboam and they're going to get rid of me. So you know what he done? Thank God, he, instead of doing that, what he done is he said, I'm just going to make some more gods myself. And he said he made two golden calves. And he set one of them in Ben, Dan, and one in Bethel, thank God. And he told the children of Israel, he said, These be the gods that brought you up out of the land of Egypt, thank God. In other words, he steered them the wrong way. He even went a day, a month difference in the time when they did the, the, the sacrifice, thank God. He did everything just about like it was what it was. But he changed the name. He changed the offering. He changed the place where they're supposed to go. And what it does, it brought the vision among them. Thank God. And I believe that in that period of time before Israel, thank God, before they fell, there was about 20 kings. Thank God that was in there, but every one of them was evil king. There wasn't a good king. I wasn't going to tell this whole story. Amen. But it's hard. I'll tell you what, it's, it's so good. Amen. When you begin to see it and you see what see it going on today. Amen. But I'll tell you what. Amen. There was a brought a division among God's people. And thank God that division has never come back. Amen. What you see over there right now, that's a that's a balance of Judah that's still left over there. That about the ten tribes, I can't even find where they came back. Thank God. I know people say, well, they're all back and they're all together. But I'm gonna tell you what, when when God lets a division come between you, it's hard to get back. Thank God. If you give up on the Lord, if you turn your back on him, thank God it's hard to get back, it's hard to overcome. All all them things. There's a lot of obstacles in your way. Thank God. And they'll be there. And if you're not careful, thank God, they'll take, they'll overthrow you. While old Jeroboam was offering up a sacrifice here, 13 and 1, he said, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord. I'm too bad. And Jeroboam stood by the altar. To burn incense. He was worshiping God, wasn't he? But he wasn't worshiping the true God. Because you can't worship the true God unless you do it God's way. He was offering up a sacrifice. They had priests. They had everything. But it was on a different day. It was in a different place. In other words, it wasn't it wasn't acceptable of God. But the people didn't know the difference, so he was able to overthrow. He was able to convince them to do the things wrong. Just like today, people, preachers, they convince people to do things and to let things go by, thank God. But what if they're wrong? How many wants to do what's right tonight? Amen. If God, we don't do it right, God's not going to accept it. You know what God gave Moses the pattern to the tabernacle? Amen. Everything. If you read the, how it was made, how the, they had to be certain calls put in and certain furniture put in and, and, the, and, the, and the, the veils that hung over they had to be made of a certain material everything had to be made according to God's plan if it wasn't according to God's plan then God would have never filled it he would have never accepted it when, when he gave Solomon and David uh, uh, the pattern to build the temple thank God it had to be according to the plan it had to be exactly the way that God put it out God has got a plan exactly about it that's why we need the Holy Ghost tonight so God can reveal that plan and that truth to us. We don't have to take somebody's word for it and just do what somebody else says. We can do it the way God said to do it. But this man of God came down where Jeroboam was at and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born into the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall be offered 
Talking about to the altar, he said, Shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee? And the bones, men shall be burnt upon thee. In other words, he prophesied against the altar. And we go on, you can read the story how the Jeroboam reached out his hand. And God put his hand, and God, he told him to put to stop him more or less. He put out his hand to stop the man of God that had set his hand withered up. Thank God. Right up on his hand. You know, I'll tell you what, we got to be careful to go against God. Thank God. Because we don't know what can happen to us. Thank God. I don't like to say, thank God, tell people, say, I don't believe that or I'm not going to do it the same thing. Just say, I don't understand it. I just need better understanding. I want to have anyone understand tonight. I don't understand a lot of things, but I'll tell you what, God has to show me in my own way, Brother Don, so I can see it. And I see these allegories and these parallels out of the Old Testament, and I can see them rolling right over and in. And it's happening spiritual on this side of the cross. It was natural over there. It's like they was, they was carried away to other lands, and, and their children was carried away, and their temple and their way of worship was carried away to Babylon. Ain't God on this side of the cross and they're being carried away by the fleshly things and the lust of the world, by the beast of man. If you plead tonight, everything's being carried away. Amen. But the people don't know the difference. But he went on and he, he made this he made this prophecy against this king. And he told him well, he made it to the altar. And the old king noted he put the altar there. Thank God. And I'll tell you what, you go against what people believe. That's what makes them mad. That's when they get upset. That's like his old king, he knew he was wrong. He knew the altar that he set up. The Lord didn't tell him to put that altar there. He put it up there for his own purpose. Thank God. I wonder how many times people are doing things just for their own purpose. Just for their own self. Thank God. To get gain. In one place he said that people that make merchandise of the people. How many places do you think tonight? And people were being used just to make money, just to make a number. But I'll tell you what, what's it going to be when you come before the Lord? All right. Get with me now. I think it's 21 or 22. 22, maybe. Chapter 22. It's going to be the first verse. No. Well, I'm just going to tell you. Amen. I can't find exactly what I want. But we can go on over here, and it talks about Josiah, where that he actually, he was born. In other words, the prophet prophesied that Josiah was going to be born. Thank God, and when it came down to the time, thank God, over here in the scripture, it goes on and talks about how the Josiah was born. Thank God, he was eight years old when he began to reign. But the thing about it is, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did the right thing, thank God. And he followed the Lord and, and did what the Lord wanted him to do, thank God. But it said when he was in his 18th year, well, actually, when he was 16 years old, he had set his heart to start searching the Lord, thank God. And when he was... So they counting the money for the treasury. Thank God they went in the they went in the temple and they found the book of the law of the Lord. Thank God, and, and that's just like I, I thought. Thank God, how that they didn't they didn't have the book here. All these kings have been over Judah. Thank God, all these people, all these years, all the times they had priests and they had church and offerings and all the things they did, but they didn't have the book of the law. Thank God, they would lost the book somewhere along the way. Thank God, and I just wonder today if we're looking in our time. Thank God about how the law. 
thank God, the, the good old King James Bible, thank God, how did it start to lose its way among the people? Thank God. Today you can't hardly find a Bible, thank God, and read out of the King James Bible because you go to store, they got all these different versions. So I'll tell you what, I've been preaching this for a long time, but I hear preachers on the radio sometimes, and, and I listen to them, and they're reading out somewhere, and I don't even know where they're reading from. It don't even sound familiar, thank God, because these new versions, they change everything. But it was just like when they went in there searching, thank God, they found the book of the law. Anyway, they brought it to the king, Josiah, and they read the book of the law to him. And when they read it to him, he found out that they was really in trouble with God, how the God was going to destroy him because of the wickedness, thank God. And he humbled himself down, and, and he read his garments, thank God. And he would begin to seek God and to search out, thank God, what God wanted him to do, thank God, how they can keep this evil from coming upon him. But as the prophet told him, thank God, God, he, that he can hold it from his day. Thank God that God would bless him and he would go to his grave. But he said after him, that wickedness had been so great that that destruction was going to come. They was going to get carried away. And God was going to bring the evil upon them and he promised he'd do. Thank God. And I just thought, thank God, they got the law out and they started reading it. They started reading the book. Thank God. Don't you think it's time that we start reading the book? We start getting in and reading for ourselves, examining ourselves. Thank God. I seen the thing on that. Facebook today, and, and I thought it was really good, amen. And I have to say out today, amen, it said about being on your telephone, thank God, it said if people spend as much time with their Bibles as they do with their telephones, uh, thank God, just think how much closer of a walk they would have with the Lord. Uh, I ain't going to talk again telephones, uh, but I'll tell you what we do sometimes spend a lot of time uh, watching t watching uh, what's going on in the news, watching what's going on, and not really getting into work, but you know what, if we get in there, God can give us the answer of all things. But this old king, when he began to read the word, he said, well, they read the word. He, he stood and he, he, he made a covenant with God. He promised God. He said, I'm going to do everything you want me to do. He said, I'm going to live back to your word. I'm going to walk after your word. And then after that, thank God, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He went out and he started putting down all the places, thank God. All the places of evil, thank God. He cast down all the, the, the gates and the, and the things that was in the temple that had been offered up to other gods. He took them out of the temple. So in other words, there was, one, there was a temple there. Amen. And people still worshiping God. And there were things that was been brought in there that was dedicated to something else. You know, there's things in this world. How could you dedicate a sinful thing to the Lord? Lord. How did you dedicate something that's sinful to God? But as the story goes on, old Josiah, he finally, he did exactly what that prophecy said he would do. After when he cleaned up the place, amen, he cleaned up the, he cleaned up the temple, he cleaned up Judah, Jerusalem, he cleaned them all up, all the evil he put away from the high places he tore down. And that's just what I, when I said, I think about this, when he, he went, he got wanted to get rid of all the things that offend God. Anything that offended God, he wanted to get rid of it. And that's just what I'm saying tonight. Our house tonight, it's a house of God, thank God. Anything that offends, thank God, that's in here, we want to get rid of that old thing, don't you? Amen. Hallelujah. Anything that offends the Lord that'll keep you in close with God, I want to get rid of it, Brother Don. I want to get it out of my old house, thank God. If there's things in my mind that shouldn't be there, I want to rebuke them, thank God. If there's some things about somebody, a feelings that I might have, thank God, towards somebody. I want to get rid of them feelings, thank God. If I feel like I've ever done anybody wrong, amen, go try to make it right, thank God. I want to get ready. I'll tell you what, when the Lord comes, and when He says, come up Heather, I want to be ready, thank God, to go up and meet Him in the air, thank God. Sister Darlene, I know He's coming, and I know He's coming after the church, but I want to be ready. If there's anything that you haven't done tonight, it's time to get it done. Hallelujah to God, don't wait. That's what we need to talk about redeeming the time. We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. All the things that's going on. All the things that's going on around us. Things that's going on in our country. I mean, you just, you, you know what? Even the devil controls the media. Amen. They, they, they teach you. You hear what they want you to know. 
Amen. They control everything. Thank God. People don't people don't realize that and how big it is. Is that who can make war with the beast? Thank God. It's so big. Thank God that it's all around us. Thank God. That it's just like just like Josiah when he he did exactly what he said when he when he found it out. He he wouldn't even went to their graves and and dug up the priests' bones and offered their bones uh, and they defiled their the altar. But offered their bones up on the altar. Thank God. Everything that's done in the dark, it's going to be brought out in the open. Thank God. Everything that people's hiding. It's coming out. The world might not see it, but God's people is going to be able to see what's going on. Now, if you're really honest with God tonight, and God will give you an answer. He'll show you the things that you're praying about, things that you're answering. I, I tell you what, I, I, I had things that I wanted to ask somebody, but I couldn't. Hey Amen. I couldn't find it, but I just pray about it. I, and I'd watch God work it out. I'd watch a thing come about. Hallelujah. And I knew that God's the one that brought it about. He'll keep bringing about the things that's troubling you tonight. The things to stand in your way. God will give you an answer to tonight and you'll follow him with your heart. Spend your time in the Word of God. Finding out what God wants you to do. It ain't just going to hold your Bible and carry it under your arm. But it's living by it. Trying to understand it. There's a lot in there I don't understand. There might be sometimes you come and ask me a question I can say I don't know. Because I don't. I don't know all. Amen. I don't think anybody does. Maybe somewhere somebody does, but I don't know anybody that knows it all. Amen. I know the one that does know it all. Amen. And I'll tell you what, he's able to keep us, help me to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And that's just what I'm saying. It's time that we think we've always got a lot of time. I'm 66 years old. And I seems like yesterday I was 30. Really? You young people, you don't know what a great opportunity you have to work for God when you start out. And oh, what if you could just redeem that and use it. Oh, I'd like to have my youth again. I'd like to be able to praise the Lord. I'd like to be able to go more than I can, thank God. But I'm going to tell you what, if you let it pass you by, thank God, and you'll, you'll wish to choose it. Like my dad used to say, save your money. Hey Amen, I wish I'd save my money. Never did have a whole lot to say. But the thing about it is, you've got to prepare. Thank God, get ready. You know, he said one place, he said line upon line and pretext upon pretext. Thank God. Here a little and precept upon precept. Amen. Precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Thank God. Every word of God is pure. And we, you know, the word precept it, the definition, it's the rule for the performance of some technical operation. So everything in God's Word, it's a rule. Uh, it's some rule. There's a way to do it. Thank God. There's even how to do it. You know that? Amen. Things that we know how to do and we're going to go and grab a hold of it and do it. But you know what? If we do it the wrong way, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to come about. It's not going to be the way God wants it done. But if we pray, God can give us just how to do it. Thank God. Sometimes, I, I've tried to talk to people when the Lord wouldn't leave me to talk to them. Amen. That wouldn't be there, Sister Darlene. And I'd go ahead and press and try to talk to them anyway. Thank God. And I was just beating the air. But I'll tell you what, if the Lord gives you something to say to somebody, then you can get it across to them. Thank God. And they're going to be able to understand what you're talking about. And maybe the Lord's even been there working on them before you get there. God works on both ends. He works on every one of us. And we draw now, and I know this story, I I didn't, want, I didn't have enough time to get in here and try to read it all tonight. But I'm going to tell you what, you go on there and you'll read. Thank God it's in the book, it's in Chronicles and it's also in Kings. Thank God that this man, Josiah. It's Chronicles 34. And it goes right out through 36, out to the end of the book. Thank God. And I'm going to tell you what, it tells a story. Thank God how that he, he turned his heart to the Lord and he was going to, God had given him power because... He turned his heart to the Lord. Even though all the things before him had been evil. And they had turned everything around. There's a bunch of junk there. Thank God. Even before you. Thank God. Maybe a lot of things in your lives. And things that you've been taught. Maybe they're not right. Thank God. Maybe they're wrong. But as you go on with your walk with God. When God begins to reveal it to you. Then them things that's wrong. Be willing to get rid of. Be willing to throw them out of your house. And find yourself clean. Before the Lord. I want to be clean with him tonight. Amen. He's coming. And when he's coming, he's coming after people that's made yourself ready. It's just like 
like I said, I'm, I'm getting older now. I don't like to say old. A few years ago, I said 66 was old, but now I don't want to say I'm old. Amen. But I'm, I'm an elder now. I don't know how many more years I've got left. But I want to spend them serving the Lord. I want to be ready. Thank God when he comes back. Amen. I want to keep pushing. Like Sister Vicky said, amen, putting on charity. The Bible says it's the bond of perfectness. Thank God. Putting it on. Thank God. I don't want to make any more, I don't want to make any more mistakes either. I don't want to do any more wrong. Thank God. I'm, I'm repenting today for things that I did yesterday. Things that I used to say and the way I used to do things. Thank God. I've drove people away from me, Brother Don. And I might not never be able to gain them again. But I'm going to tell you what. I, I still pray about it. I say, God, help me. Thank God. Make me a better person. Thank God. I want to do what you want me to do. I I want to encourage people to follow you. I tell you what, God is the only way. Jesus Christ, Him crucified, thank God. He come in your life, He'll change your life. Now there's other gods, there's other churches, there's other Bibles, there's other songs, there's other music, but what has the Lord chosen? That's what I want to do. I want to do what the Lord does. I mean, God's got things that belong to Him. It's just like this man Josiah. He, they found things that was dedicated. To, the horses was dedicated to the sun. And they what they dedicated things to their gods and they took it all in the temple. Thank God. Amen. It's like people today. They, they bring all kinds of stuff inside the church. They bring it in their life. They live a life of sin in their life. Amen. And people see the sin. You know, sinners will see sin in your life. And you know what they'll say? They say, you say you're a Christian. Amen. But you know what? If we put on charity, they ain't going to be able to find no fault with us. All they're, they're going to be the old flesh. Jesus told his disciples, he said, thank God, he said, he said, sleep on. He said, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. And the flesh is what you got to crucify. That's what's got to die. Amen. Nobody wants to die. But when you begin to give the things of the world up, then you can draw close to God. You can feel the drawing God to draw me closer. Nobody wants to fast. Nobody wants to give up their food and their meals. Nobody wants to do that. But the Lord tells us if we do that, we can bring our, our flesh under subjection. And, we'll, and we can feel the Lord. We can draw closer to Him. Amen. These things are for our benefit tonight. Thank God. This exhortation is for your benefit tonight. Amen. I'm not here just for myself, but I'm here for the benefit of everybody. I, I wish everybody I could get this across. I've got a power a PowerPoint that I've got part of this, thank God. And maybe I'm going to get into it here before long. And where it talks about you can see it right through the Bible, how that everything's turned from the old to the new. Thank God. And it, it's it's something I just took me time to, to put it on paper and to put it down. And I'll tell you what, there's things in my mind that I don't know how to preach on it. Amen. But I know God, one of these days, He's going to give me and I'm going to be able to preach. Amen. Let's all stand. How many loves the Lord tonight? He's a good God, isn't He? Amen. Come get a song, children. Amen. Think about what I've said tonight. Get ready. Even if you've made a start, is there anything you don't, that you know that needs to be done? You need to get it done. Get it over with. Then it can't stand in your way no more.